we got cut off just a little bit at the end there so I wanted to reiterate that the big disadvantages of dot plots are that they can be hard to make obviously you have to have all the data and type it into a computer program and such especially big data sets but it can be difficult to tell exactly which number is which dot right but they're good at giving an overall picture of the of the data um, I guess that's a good overall visual representation of the data that's what they're so good about speaking of overall representation of the data in particular when we look at data when it's drawn in a histogram or a dot plot or a stem and leaf plot we're one of the things we're really interested in and we will be interested in for the rest of the course is what shape does it have now there's some uh, main shapes that we're interested in four main types to be specific there's the uniform shape where everything is more or less evenly spread out now they're not going to be exactly 20 every time like this they're going to be up and down and up and down and up and down but they'll be pretty evenly spread out right all the bars will be mostly the same height not exactly but mostly then there's something called the bell shape which is also known as um the normal shape which we'll talk about um pretty much for the whole back half of the course when everything is required to be bell shaped in order to be worked with um so that's when the highest frequency is in the middle and then there's less and less and less as you work your way off to the edges and those are called tails this is the left tail over here this is the right tail over here we're going to be working with that shape almost all the time from chapter seven onward. It's a big deal. All right, then there's also skewed right distributions where you have this kind of tail going off to the right. So you get the peak on the left side, right? And then the tail to the right of the peak is longer than the tail to the left. I.e., you got a big long tail on the right. That's also called positively skewed because it doesn't have to be right. It can just be higher values, if you will. And then you can have negatively skewed, i.e. skewed left, where you've got the big tail on the left side, i.e. to the lower values. Okay, It's not possible to determine a shape for bar graphs, right? Every look, look at all of these. These are all histograms. Histograms use numbers as their horizontal axis, right? Because it's quantitative data, and quantitative data has order. Oops, hold on. Let me write this up. Hold on one second. That was a lot of typing. All right, so let me see if I can go over it again. Um, so bar graphs are for qualitative data. And because it's qualitative, then the horizontal axis doesn't have an order to it. And when you look at this histogram up here, 20 is lower than 30 is lower than 40. There's an inherent order because these are numbers. They're quantities. But qualitative data doesn't have that. It's not like blue is worse than brown just because it's to the left of it. Or yellow is better than red just because it's to the right of that, right? So since there's no left, right, the left and the right on the chart are completely arbitrary. We decided to put blue there and yellow there. We could have flipped it all around, right? You can't do that with histograms because we all know how number lines work. 20 is to the left of 160. You can't flip it around, right? Quantitative data has an inherent scale and order. It's a number line when you look at this. When you look at this horizontal axis here, it is a number line. When you look at this horizontal axis here, it isn't. That's because this graph is for qualitative data, but this graph is for quantitative data. That's why only histograms and qu other quantitative data graphs like dot plots and such and stem and leaf plots will have skewed left and skewed right. Qualitative data can never have skewed left and skewed right ever. Speaking of which, let's determine what these are and we'll be all done. So this one looks pretty skewed right to me. The next one looks pretty uniform. I can just see it. it's kind of up and down and up and down and up and down. It's not perfect, but it's close, so uniform. The next one is bell-shaped. Actually quite bell-shaped. It's perfectly bell-shaped. Right. And the last one is skewed left. All right, I think we are all done with section 2-2. Two, two. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll meet you back here for 2-3. See you then.